representing the, uh, the Galvin Electricity Initiative, which Bob Galvin, the previous chairman of Motorola, and I uh, formed after our retirements to try to advance the cause of quality in electricity service, recognizing today's power system is largely a museum piece, which has very poor quality in every dimension for in terms of service, uh, in terms of meeting the needs of a digital economy in the 21st century and in many parallels to the transformation that occurred in telecommunications uh, starting 30 years ago. Uh, also, uh, I had the pleasure and privilege uh, a year or two ago of being able to serve on the National Research Council's uh, uh, Renewable Energy Panel as part of the National Energy Strategy that was developed. And I was there less as a uh, renewable energy expert, as someone who was sort of representing a perspective on the, on the grid. And it was very interesting there because uh, this group, as we began to talk about it, uh, concluded that for the most part, the renewable portfolio standards that exist today at the state and regional level uh, are frankly not worth the paper they're written on uh, in terms of being able to achieve them. Now, there are some, ex there are some exceptions, and I, I'm uh, very complimentary of the leadership that San Diego Gas and Electric had, is taking because they also have some incentives for that leadership which unfortunately most utilities do not have today. But the, uh, uh, those uh, standards, uh, frankly, because of the intermittency of uh, non-hydro renewable energy is simply not compatible with the electromechanical uh, analog control capabilities that we have in today's power grid. And uh, anytime you get above about a, a, a single digit percentages, uh, you're going to start to fundamentally undermine what is already very poor reliability unless you're prepared to build in a great deal of backup power, generally fired by uh, natural gas, or uh, storage, which we uh, don't have at the scale needed uh, for uh, centralized wind and uh, solar energy. So the, uh, the issue there is that uh, one must have as a fundamental portion of achieving the uh, renewable energy goals that we are trying to achieve and for ultimately for carbon control is to have an intelligent grid. And when I say that, I uh, want to just underscore a couple of points, if I may. You've seen several versions of this slide. I won't bear a great deal up, other than to say that the grid incorporates all of these aspects. And in fact, today our power system is not a grid, by and large. It is a radial system, which means that the ability to manage between demand sources is really not there. And the other, the really the core to the smart grid is to be able to seamlessly integrate supply and demand literally at the speed of light. To break down what I would call the iron curtain today that uh, basically blocks supply and demand. These buildings, as others have already pointed up, should become power plants, not power pigs. And that's true not only in California or Arizona or other uh, similar Mediterranean climates, but can be done effectively in any area. It's being done rather broadly in Germany today, for example. Uh, so that the ability to turn buildings and homes and neighborhoods into energy sources is very important. Where is this going to lead? Well, I think the first and most important thing is we have to open the door to find out. Uh, immediate, of course, is to offset the need for peak power demands, as has already been pointed out. But as the technology advances, the equilibrium between centralized and distributed power is something which will continue to change over time. And uh, so this is a very important dimension of improving both the performance uh, and environmental reliability of our system. And uh, uh, the use of microgrids uh, has been pointed out here uh, already uh, as a fundamental vehicle for being able to optimize and incorporate supply and demand is a very important factor. So uh, if we're integrating, there are several uh, dimensions here. Uh, first, of course, as I've said, is the instantaneous electronic and monitoring and control of the entire system from end to end. An end is not at the meter. The end is at the final end use device, whatever that happens to be in your home or business. And that requires seamless connectivity so that everything is connected and operating in balance at all times and is controlled as an integrated system. We need a standardized plug-and-play grid architecture. It cannot be a series of uh, proprietary capabilities that each utility or other organization develops. 
it must be plug and play architecture. Uh, and of course, that is what uh, NIST is trying to promote and achieve. There's a great deal of pushback from that. I think everyone believes in that in principle, but when it comes down to the practice, they'll say, well, fine, just make sure you use my standards. I don't want to use those standards. And that becomes the problem. If you go back in time to the early days of the electricity industry, uh, some of you may already be aware of this, the plugs in the wall that we plug into, every manufacturer had its own design. GE and Westinghouse devices, for example, were not uh, interoperable that way. But they fast found that that was really a market limitation. It was not.